Hi, welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today I'm going to kind of do something a little different than what I was planning on doing for this week's episode. I have two projects that I've been working on and unfortunately I haven't gotten the parts in on it. So uh, I can't get either one of them completed by this weekend. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw another little project in the middle here. Uh, as you know, uh, not too long ago I did a uh, video on a Steinite crystal radio. Well, this is another crystal radio. This one here is a home built that I've had and it needs a little bit of work. The, the case needs refinished, uh, just cleaned up and uh, I need to add a cat whisker to it and, and get this, try it out, see if it works. Uh, the other thing that kind of happened while I was doing the videos on the other things that I was doing, uh, I had pulled out this little microphone. Now this is a little radio mic talk scene play. It's kind of a novelty little thing that came out in the 30s. And all it is is it's a microphone that you tie to a little disc that you cut out of the instruction sheet and you add these little metal tabs to it. So you attach the mic to the tabs and you put the, this over a tube socket and then plug the tube in and it allows you to talk over the radio. Now the reason why I even brought this up is inside the box I discovered this here. It's a little slip of paper that is a Johnson Smith and Company little catalog pamphlet and it has some prices on some parts for a crystal radio. And it shows a little diagram of a crystal radio setup that has headphones, a detector, an antenna, and a ground. That's it. There's nothing to tune it with. I just got curious about this and decided, you know what, I'm going to set this up and see if this works as is. So we're going to go ahead and try that. I do have a crystal radio detector and a set of headphones and of course a ground and an antenna. So we'll see how that plays out and uh, who knows it may or may not work. The only issue that I see with it is there's no way of tuning it because the uh, you know you need to have either a capacitor or uh, an inductor of some type in order to to actually narrow down that frequency band. So the only other thing that could possibly help tune it is the length of the aerial would have to be cut to a specific frequency. Now I'm not going to use a long wire antenna, I'm going to use a loop antenna that I always use. So if I get a frequency, I get a frequency. We'll see how that works, but I won't be able to change frequencies is what I'm saying. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll tear this thing down and let's see what's inside of it and get started on the restoration. A bunch of little tiny screws around it. It's an interesting box. I don't know where they got the box. If it was, it seems like the panel here was cut. Cut very amateurishly, sorta. Of. So that's the box right there. It just it's just needs cleaned up. It shouldn't be too hard to just sand this down and get a coat of uh, of lacquer on it and some stain. So we'll take care of that in a minute. So this is the radio itself. Uh, I've got my antenna and ground connections here. Here's my phone connections. They added these little extenders with these copper plates that are obviously cut very rustically. I really don't need these. These things have the grooves for the for the phones to latch into. I don't know why they put that on there. But those are coming off. I don't need them and really don't like them. I think they take away from the appearance. So this is it. I've got my detector. I've got my whatever type of crystal that is, whether it's 
uh, I, I have no idea. I don't know what that particular crystal is offhand, but it's probably a Galena crystal of some type. Uh, it's missing the cat whisker. I do have a replacement. And this is my tuner. It's a coil tuner. And what it uses is this slides along this coil here. Now this was cut with a scroll saw or something. I don't, I'm not sure. It's interesting. There's a little capacitor here. So I have all my makings of a, a nice little crystal radio here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take her apart and uh, we're going to do a restoration. I'm going to clean up this panel, buff it out really well and see if I can't get some lettering highlighted there. Same with the dial. So we'll get this thing looking really nice. Okay, get my crystal out of there. So, as you can see, that wiper goes right along that coil there for tuning purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and map all this out. So let's draw up a schematic real quick. I'm just going to call this Homebrew Schematic. Alright, first of all, I have my two phone jacks right here. So let's go ahead and get those drawn in here. That's going to be a phone and a phone. And then I got my ground, which is right here. Alright, from my top phone jack here, or this one right here, I am going between, I'm going to come out here. And between this phone jack and the ground, I have a capacitor. The ground and that phone jack are tied together. Okay, so. If I come out here a little further on this one, I'm going to hit my cathode, which is the mechanism part of the cat whisker assembly. The anode is the cat whisker itself. It's going to come out here and it hits a my antenna jack. and then I hit my coil. Now this coil doesn't have that side hooked up. Now what I do have is I have my wiper here which is tied to ground so here's my ground here. So let's go ahead and bring that out. There's my wiper. All right, very simple. That's pretty much my schematic. Let's go ahead and start desoldering some stuff here.
<laughs> Some bug in there. I may not remove that. I don't think I have to. I'm not going to take that one off. I'm going to leave that on there as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. Clean all the parts up. And we'll get this thing back together. metal parts with some steel wool and brass them. I always get a lot of crap for doing this. People start screaming, you're getting rid of all the patina. You're getting rid of all the patina. It's the patina that makes it look antique. And you're getting rid of all the patina. Well, there's another name for patina. It's called rust. And that's what this is. So I don't care if I'm getting rid of the rust. You can call it patina all you want. It's rust. So... By removing it, I am ensuring that this thing has a lot more longevity. Okay. Well, that's I'm going to throw into the parts cleaner. Okay, I'm gonna, I got all my parts in this little basket here. I use in this basket because the this is not gonna not gonna work with the uh, little screws. So this thing's been heating up. It's not quite fully heated, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started anyway. Set my time for 10 minutes, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in there. I like to add a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid. Not a lot. Okay. It's been a little bit of time. Let's see how this looks. Mm, not too bad. Okay, I definitely uh, 
consider these clean. I'm going to go ahead and rinse them off in the sink. stuff to dry and we'll go ahead and start reassembling. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and get this thing back together. You need to be able to touch every part of that crystal. That's where I need it. That completes the assembly of the faceplate. Now all I need to do is uh, get the case finished up and put it all back together and test her out. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit it with some red mahogany stain.
All right, so like I said, I wanted to try out this little crystal radio configuration that this uh, little pamphlet has. And if you remember, it's nothing more than a headphone hooked to a detector, hooked to a ground, hooked to an antenna. So what I've got here is I've got a detector, an antenna, and I've got a ground connection. That's about a four foot ground rod going into the earth. And I've tied my headphone to the ground the other side of it to the detector. It's looping through that antenna. It's coming back out of the antenna and I've hooked the, the other end of the antenna ground to that ground as well. So my antenna is grounded and I have to admit I did uh, go ahead and tune this and it took me forever to get the right spot on this crystal so I'm not going to go ahead and do that again but it is playing right now. I'm picking up a local station. Okay so what I've got is an inductive amplifier right here and what that'll do is it'll allow you to hear what I'm hearing. So as you can see, it doesn't take much to get a crystal radio to actually receive. And this is a very, very simple crystal radio. It doesn't even have a tuner in it. It just has the detector, antenna, and headphones. Now, if I had a long wire antenna that's cut for different frequencies, I could obviously pick up other stations. What I do know I'm picking up is a local station that has uh, an antenna that's only probably about five miles away from here and it's a very strong signal. But I just wanted to show you that this does work. It just probably not as efficient as a lot of crystal radios, but it is possible to use just a detector antenna and headphones to receive a signal. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little field trip that we had, uh, but i got to get back to this. Unfortunately, I've run into an issue. It's been raining since uh, last night, and it stormed all morning. Uh, it finally let up, but the humidity is so doggone high, I can't use lacquer on this thing right now. Uh, because the only place I can spray it is outdoors, and the humidity is way too high to be spraying lacquer. So what I'm going to do is give it a coat of shellac. And uh, what shellac is, it's a sealer. It'll help to uh, get this thing kind of sealed off. And I'm probably going to just go ahead and put it back together after I seal it and I'll wait for better weather in order to get a good lacquer coat on it but it's not going to look all that different it's just going to be a, a little bit of a thicker finish so let me go ahead and do that because I really want to get this thing wrapped up so I can get this video out So I was able to get a coat of lacquer on here after I shellacked it, which pretty much sealed it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it another coat. Right now I'm just, this is a tack rag. I'm getting any dust that's on it off of it.
let that dry and I'll go ahead and uh, reassemble it. So let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. Uh, I went ahead and put together a period specific schematic for the radio and uh, I actually used uh, some of the symbols from a 1922 book that shows the schematic symbols that would be used in that period and interestingly uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, in the 20s obviously they didn't have silicone diodes now the schematic symbol for a silicone diode has its origins from the old cat whisker symbol if you really look at it and I just thought I'd uh, bring that up because the similarities are very very uh, noticeable so just a nice little uh, trivia thing there but I'm going to toss this uh, schematic in this box leave it here uh, I've let the box sit overnight uh, to pretty much dry after uh, lacquering it so let's put it together and see if we can't get something out of it Okay, I really like the way that turned out. Looks really, really nice. So, let's go ahead and uh, hook things up to it. As you can see, I do have the antenna. I've got a ground connection. So let's go ahead and hook up our antenna and ground. See if I can get something. Okay, took a little bit. There you can hear it. Now it sounds a lot better in the headphones, but uh, you get the point. It does work. I'm real happy with it. Okay, so this concludes today's episode, and here you have it. We brought another 1920s era radio back to life. And hopefully this thing will find a nice uh, location on my shelf where it'll display real nicely, and uh, possibly in the future sometime it'll wind up in the hands of another collector. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this, please hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. I really wish everybody happy restorations, and I hope to see you all next video.